Giants fans, thank you for watching the Giants Alliance channel. Today I'm going to talk about the defensive depth chart and what it will look like after the injuries to Xavier McKinney and David Mayo. And Xavier McKinney's injury is the first major loss the Giants have had during training camp. I know Cody Core is a big injury as well, but he's much more replaceable than a player like Xavier McKinney, who was a high second round pick and somebody that was definitely a first round talent. He was gonna be our primary free safety and play a lot in the deep half. He's also very versatile and he was gonna be able to play in the slot a little bit. He was gonna play up in the box. And I, I think it's a major loss because I think McKinney was definitely gonna help us against tight ends, which has been such a big weakness of ours from so many years. And um, I was really excited to see him play. So it's definitely a big loss. I really feel bad for him, but the, Jordan Rannon tweeted out today that he's going to probably be back after the bye week, which is the end of November. So exactly three months from now, hopefully he'll be fully recovered. And in today's video, I want to talk about what I think the entire defensive depth chart is going to look like and how the Giants are going to play without McKinney and without Mayo. Mayo should be out for only a couple of weeks because he's getting some minor knee surgery. But... I don't think his loss is nearly as big as McKinney's. I think McKinney was going to be a major playmaker for our defense. But I want to talk about what the defensive line is going to look like first. And I think that's definitely the strength of our defense now um, by far. So I think starting on the defensive line, it's going to be Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, I think these three players are going to have to carry the defense on their back. And if we have any hope of being a decent defense this year, with all the holes we have in our secondary and with the lack of athleticism we have in our linebacker core, we're going to need those three players to really get a pass rush and get a lot more sacks than they got last year. Um, Dexter Lawrence only had two and a half sacks last year. Leonard Williams only had one sack last year. So we're going to need each of those players to get at least five sacks for our defense to have enough pass rush to be decent enough. Um, backing up those three starters, which I think is the best part of our defense, we have we have some decent backups. I think it's going to be Austin Johnson, B.J. Hill, who was really good as a rookie, but was not as good last year in a sophomore season. And then Dalen Mack, who we recently signed, who played a little bit for Baltimore, and he's a big body. He's more of a run stuffer. So I think he's going to make the team because of that, and he's like going to be you know a backup nose tackle. Um, on the edge, and this is one of the weaker parts of our team in my opinion, but I do think there's a couple players that are a little underrated. And I think starting on the edge is going to be Kyler Fackrell and Marcus Golden. And Kyler Fackrell is a very versatile player. I think he's going to start and play most of the time because he is familiar with Patrick Graham. And he was on Green Bay a couple of years ago when Patrick Graham was defensive assistant linebackers coach so i think Kyler frackle is going to have a good year um o'shane zimenez and lorenzo carter i think are going to be backups but they're going to play a lot i think lorenzo carter is going to drop back a lot more in coverage than he did in the past but i think o'shane zimenez is going to be a pass rush specialist and backing up those players i think carter coughlin can maybe surprise this year because he was a good pass rusher from Minnesota that we got in the seventh round. So I'm excited about Carter Coughlin, but those are our edge players. At linebacker, I think starting at linebacker is gonna be Blake Martinez and Ryan Connolly in the middle. Ryan Connolly did practice today, which I think is really good news because he's been sitting out and he's coming back slowly from a torn ACL last year. But he was our best defensive player on the team last season when he was actually in the games he only played three and a half games because he was injured in that fourth game against washington which was actually our best game of the season defensively where we our defense actually played really well but um backing up those players without david mayo i think mayo would have been a backup but i think taking his spot as the third middle linebacker is going to be Devonte downs who's actually a bigger player sort of like Mayo. He's um, one of the best players in the Pac-12 in 2017, a seventh round pick by Minnesota. So I think Devonta Downs is somebody that if Connolly's not ready to go, he could be starting for us. And supposedly he's looked really good in training camp. 
Cam Brown has actually been working with the edge rushers. I think he's going to definitely be on the team as a special teams contributor. But I think he's going to be cross-trained a lot like a lot of our other players. So I think Cam Brown is going to play a little bit of edge and a little bit in the middle. So our cornerback situation is very much up in the air after James Bradbury. Um, the depth chart, in my opinion, is going to be after Bradbury, Julian Love, Darnay Holmes, Corey Ballantyne, Javon Askew Henry, Christian Angelo, and Brandon Williams. And Christian Angelo is somebody I'm actually pretty excited about. I think he will make the team. He was a, um, a player that played for Cincinnati a couple of years ago, and then he ended up transferring to Hampton, uh, a small school. And he matched up really well with Antonio Gandy Golden during their matchup when those teams played. And um, he's somebody I think is a little bit of a sleeper and maybe has an outside chance of starting. Javon Askew Henry is a player a lot of people like as well as a, a sleeper to make the team and maybe contribute right away. So yeah, that's what I think our cornerbacks are gonna look like. I think we definitely need somebody to step up opposite Bradbury. Maybe it's Julian Love. Um, at safety, it's very much up in the air after uh, Jabril Peppers. Peppers is going to start. I actually think Montre Hardage is going to start at safety opposite Jabril Peppers. And uh, Hardage is a versatile player. He plays a little bit of corner and a little bit of safety. But um, I think if Julian Love ends up starting on the outside cornerback spot opposite Bradbury, then I think Hardage can start because he's somebody who plays in the slot a little bit but he's not overly athletic he only ran a 4.6840 so I think Hardage is going to end up playing safety for us in McKinney's spot and once in a while he'll play on the, on the slot kind of like McKinney would play and um, he's a very smart player he went to Northwestern and those are the kind of players that Joe Judge likes that Patrick Graham who's an Ivy League guy as well Remember, we actually have two Ivy League coordinators in Jason Garrett and Patrick Graham. So I think a guy like Hardage, who's not overly athletic, but is a very instinctual player, a very smart player, will end up starting for us. And I think it definitely helps that he's the only player to ever play in a Patrick Graham defense while Patrick Graham was defensive coordinator last year for the Miami Dolphins. So I know Blake Martinez and Kyler Fackrell are familiar with our defensive coordinator because they played with him in Green Bay but at that time Patrick Graham was just an inside linebackers coach so I think our defense before the McKinney injury I thought we would have played a lot of three safety sets and I thought Julian Love would have played a lot more safety I think we could have played a lot of positionless football kinda like Clemson did last year where Isaiah Simmons, Kayvon Wallace, and Tanner Muse were kinda all over the place and you never knew exactly where they were going to line up. Remember, Isaiah Simmons was a safety before he became a linebacker last year, and they played basically with three safeties, um, and they were very interchangeable on that defense. So I thought the Giants would have played in a similar style with McKinney, Peppers, and Love, but I think McKinney getting injured and being out for the first three months is definitely going to hurt the defense and change plans a bit. But I do think Montreal Harrell is going to be a major part of the plans now because he's a versatile player he's somebody that's smart he's instinctual and i think he's going to play a little bit of everywhere sort of like mckinney would have um there are some free agents available like logan ryan and logan ryan is kind of advertising himself as a safety so maybe he'll come over and um at the same time i don't think the giants are willing to give him the kind of money he's asking for which is why he's still a free agent at this time. But I do think he would have been a good fit, especially now with McKinney out. But um, yeah, that's my video for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I want to shout out Nick the Wick for donating the arm for my microphone. I'm not using it right now because I just ordered a windscreen because like during my live stream last time, it was a little bit too loud. So I want to get the setup just right. But I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate Richard Lewis. He um, recommended a video about Austin Mack, which I'm going to make in the next couple days. But uh, thanks for being a great supporter of my channel. Also, thank you to everyone else who subscribed recently. So please like, please subscribe. Um, I will probably live stream on Saturday, but I can't guarantee it because I'm starting work again.
But um, I'm going to try to get a consistent schedule where I stream on Saturdays and talk about Giants. Um, so I definitely appreciate your guys' support. All right, that's my video for today. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.